it here. 3 squared is plus 9 here, minus 9 here. Then remember that all of these guys get grouped together and replaced by this, but these two you have to put together yourself. So if it's minus 14 minus 9 more, how many is that? 23. So this is your equation in what's called vertex form. Now the reason you would want it in vertex form is it makes it very easy to find the vertex. So if it's a minus 3 in here, which way would I transform or shift the graph? Ah. Oh, no, left. To the right, 3, right? Okay, if it's a minus in there, you always do the opposite. And then the 23, which way does that shift it? Down. So my vertex would be 323. Good? Okay, yes. let's do the one with the fraction. Look at number... Actually, let's do number 2. Okay, look at it. First thing I notice is there's a 3 in front. You cannot complete the square when you have a number in that spot. So how do we fix it? Divide everything by 3. Ladies? So you have x squared. 12 divided by 3 is 4x. What is 18 divided by 3? 6. And remember, you put 6 with blanks on either side because we're going to put numbers here and here. Okay, take half of minus 4. How much? Minus 2. Then I find what 2 squared is. I put a positive 1 here and a negative 1 here. What is negative 2 if I square it? We're dividing by 3 to remove. You can't complete the square with the number there. Okay, it's 4. Then I put a plus 4 in the first blank. Minus 4 in the second blank. And then remember, these guys stick together. These guys stick together. So if I have a 6 minus 4, what is 6 minus 4 for my second number? Plus 2. Very good. Okay, then from there, we're going to take our number that we took away and we're going to put it back. So what did we initially divide by? Then you got to put it back in the front. Well, we cut this number in half. Remember, you half the middle number, and then you square it to fill in the blanks. Okay? So, from here, which way would I be shifting my graph? There's a minus 2 here. Which way do I go? Right 2. Then, what about this guy? Up 2. And then, if I have a 3 in the front, is that a vertical stretch or a vertical compression? This number here is a vertical stretch. Okay, and then you can put because 3 greater than 1. 1 is the cutoff, so if it's a number smaller than 1, it's a compression. Bigger than 1, it's a stretch. Okay? Alright, now, I'm not going to do number 3 with you, but what will you need to do to complete the square on it? Not divide by 2. Multiply by 2. Yes. No, so this is always the opposite. So here, it kind of looks like a plus. That's really a minus. Okay, so whatever the sign is in the parentheses, that's always the opposite. So I think I was trying to circle something. This is a minus here, y'all. So make sure that's a negative, and that's why I really went to the right. Okay, so number three, if you want to make a little marker, you're going to have to times that through by two. And then that will fix all of your numbers to where you can complete the square so on it. Have to do one half times two? Uh, well, what's half of two? One. So that will make that an x squared, and then you can complete the square. Okay, now take a look at number four. Your first term is negative. That's not going to work. How do I get rid of the negative on number four? I'm going to times by negative one. And then the negative is going to flip all of my signs to where my x squared will come back to being positive like we want. So this is a positive x squared, a positive 3x, and then my 4 is now negative. Then I have to take half of the middle term. What is half of 3? 1.5, or 1 and a half is fine. Okay, then for me to know what to fill in the blank, you could just use a calculator on that. Okay, so 1.5 squared. Okay, I'll type it in right here for you to see. 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25. <coughs> 2 
So I would put a plus 2.25 in this blank, minus 2.25 in that blank. Then remember, these guys all stick together, these guys stick together. So if I have negative 4 minus 2.25 more, what's that last number? 6.25. Good job. Now, I'm not done. I have to take the number that I initially had and put it back. So what did I initially get rid of? That negative, then I got to put it back in the front. So it would be y equals negative, and then x plus 1.5 squared minus 6.25. Okay, from there, what's my vertex? Negative 1.5, negative 6.25. Very good. Bless you. Then your transformation, you would list, I'm going to the left 1.5, down 6.25, and then what does the negative in the front mean for the graph? It's going to be flipped or reflected down. Okay, that's what the negative does. So if it's a number bigger than one, it's a stretch, smaller than one, it's a compression, and then a negative reflects it down. Good on that? All right, turn the page. Okay, next page, you have two questions that you have to graph on your test tomorrow. So let's just remember the general shapes here at the top. If it's an x squared, which shape is it going to be? Is it a line, a v, or a u? A u. If it's a negative x squared, your u just opens down. If it's an absolute value, this guy, it's a v. One v goes up, one v goes down, based on if it's positive or negative. Okay, then your last equation, your linear, would be if it's a y equals mx plus b or a negative mx plus b. And remember, the difference is if it's uphill or if it's downhill. So if you get confused on the shapes, that's how you can know the difference. x squared is always a u. Absolute value bars are always a v. And then linear means there's just an x without a squared or bars. So we're going to do... Maybe 9 and 11. Okay, look at number 9. First thing I'm going to do is identify which endpoint is open, which endpoint is closed. For number 9, which one is open? Top or bottom? Bottom is open, and the top is closed. Okay, how do we know that? Based on the, the little line, the equal to. Very good. So for my open, actually let's do close first since it was on top. I'm going to plug in 2 to this guy. So I'd have 2 plus 2 squared minus 9. What's 2 plus 2 in the middle? 4. Okay, what's 4 squared? 16 minus 9, how many? 7. So I'm going to go to x equals 2, the number I plugged in. I'm going to go up to 7. I'm going to put a closed dot. So 2 is here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is here. Closed dot. Now, what category does an x squared fit into? Is it a line, a v, or a u? U. How does it open, up or down? Up. And how is it shifted if I have a plus 2 here and a minus 9 here? Left, 2, and down 9. So go left 2, down 9. And then how do I connect them with a U? And, and when I get to that dot, remember, I have to stop. So my U is all on this side until I hit there, and then I cut the graph off. At that dot, I'm going to switch to the open circle. Okay? So let's find our open circle next. Plug in 2 to the bottom. Negative 2 plus 6. How many do we get there? 4. And then I'm going to put an open circle at 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I look at the shape of that graph. If it's a negative x plus 6, 
what category does that fit in? A U, a V, or a line? It's a line. Now, if it's a negative X, what's the slope, up or downhill? Downhill. Very good. Okay. So this is your X plus 2 squared minus 9 side. This is your negative X plus 6 side. And if you want to do the slope very carefully, that's fine, but you don't really have to. Get the idea? Remember this? Increasing, where is my graph going uphill? What interval? <coughs> where does it first start going uphill? Uh, yeah, down here until when? Two? Yeah, now keep in mind we want to list the x's. So negative 9 is how low it is, but how far backwards is it? What x is that? So if this is 0, that's 1, 2. So from negative 2 until this x is 2. Then for decreasing, we want it to be going downhill. Well, that will basically be the other two chunks of the graph. So you can see where I highlight in pink all of this. Downhill. Until when? 2. Right, negative 2. Then I pick back up here. All of this is what? downhill again until infinity. So my graph is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2 union. That's my first little chunk right here. And then my second chunk is from 2 to infinity on the other side. So remember the difference. Increasing just means that it has a positive slope or it's going uphill versus decreasing is a negative slope or downhill. Okay? Alright, take a look at number 11. We'll do this one together. Okay, number 11. Which one is open? Which one is closed? Okay, the bottom one is open. The top one is closed. Remember, the first thing that you should do is plug your values in to find where the open and closed circles go. So I'm taking the number 4, and I'm going to plug it in. So I have negative 4 minus 2 plus 3. What is 4 minus 2 in here? 2. two. And then if I absolute value 2, it just stays positive. It was already positive to begin with. So this is negative 2 plus 3. So absolute value on 4 minus 2, it just stays at 2. Then from there, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So our x is 4. We're going to go to a height of 1. We're going to put a closed dot. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, closed dot. Then from there, I have to find my shape. So if I have bars around this thing, that means it's an absolute value, then what shape is it? A V, but which way does it open if there's a negative? It's going to be a V that opens down like that. Now let's find where the vertex goes. Look at how it's transformed. So if I have a minus 2 here, which way are we going? Right 2 and up 3. So right 2, up 3, and then draw your V. So I start at my closed dot that I already placed here at 1. And then remember, my V starts at 2, 3, and it opens down. But when I get to here, I have to stop it because I'm going to switch to the other picture. Okay? Other side, we're plugging in 4. So I have 4 minus 6 squared. What's 4 minus 6 in the middle? Negative 2. What's negative 2 if I square it? 4. So I'm going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, open circle. And then from there, huh? So we plugged in 4 to this. 4 minus 6 is negative 2 squared. It got 4. Then you stay at the same x, put your open circle here. Then if it's an x squared, what shape is it? A u. And which way is it shifted? To the left or right, if there's a minus, right. to the right. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then do my U, like that. Right. 
then from there, my graph is increasing everywhere that it is going uphill. Is it going uphill for the first part of the V, yes or no? Yes. You have to remember that you're always looking at it left to right. So as I come through here this way, that counts as uphill. Then this is downhill. That's downhill, but this is uphill again. So you have two sections of the graph that are going uphill. There and there. So I'd say negative infinity until 2, union. And then this was 6, so it'd be 6 till infinity. Okay, then for my last two little pieces of the graph, you can see here and here that it's decreasing. So I would list those intervals on the second part. Now, should you break them up if there's a break in the graph? Technically, yes. So this chunk here, I would do from 2 to 4. Union, and then from 4 to 6. If you forgot to break them up on your test, I don't think I'd probably take off for that. But you should technically break them up um, just because that's the right thing to do. Okay? All right, turn to your last page. Okay, last page, you're determining if it's even or odd, if it's positive or negative. Remember, even functions, I'll give you like a little key here in the middle. Even functions, ends go same direction. If they both go up, then it's positive. If they both go down, then it's negative. Odds, your ends go opposite directions. Ends go opposite directions. If it goes down to up, it's going to be positive. If it goes from up to down, it's going to be negative. Now, you already have that in your notes somewhere, but if you want to write it down again, it doesn't hurt. So when you're looking at the rows, if the ends go together, it's even. If they're both up, it's positive. Both down, it's negative. Okay, if ends go opposite directions, down to up is positive, up to down is negative. So let's look at that bottom row. Okay, look at that first one. Do my ends go together or apart? Okay, this one's down, that one's up. That means that it is even or odd. Which one? Odd. odd. Then look at the direction it's going. If it's from down to up, Negative. down to up, then it's Negative. positive. Yeah, so you can think about how does it end. If it ends up, it's positive. Look at the okay? Positive. Yeah, so it goes from down to up. Oh, you're on the top row. I got you. My bad. Okay, so that would be positive. Okay, look at the one right next to it. Even or odd here. Bottom row, middle. Even, positive or negative? Next one right next to it? Even, positive. Okay, last one we'll do together. Do the very top one. Left. What's this one? Odd or even? Odd, because they're opposites. What's the overall sign? It goes from up to down, that's negative. negative. Okay? So you only have like five questions left. You should be able to finish this. If you're not on Remind 101, I'm going to send the answer key out tonight. I check your review for completion. So if you did the whole thing wrong, you're going to get a check. But then tomorrow when you take your test, you're going to go into it with a lot of confidence and end up not doing well. So when you get the answer key on Remind, Look at your review. Make sure that you got everything right. You can also check the answer key now. Okay, but if you get a check for completion, your test is not completion. So make sure when you receive that, that you really look through it. Make sure everything's right. Okay. Yes. That is the remind code. If you haven't joined, um, then it's right here.
And then um, I videoed it. So if you want to watch it, you can. If not, you can look at the examples on the key. Yes, uh, grab the bathroom pass, that yellow one. Okay, so if it's squared, then you know that it's a And then the minus shifts the graph from zero to over two. So that's how I knew it had to go back down to right and then back up. Back. Okay, we get some work done, yeah? Okay, let's get a couple of those finished, okay? Now that you have to wait, we have x squared. Well, when it already is resolved, and 
Teacher, you need to sign it? Yeah, shit like that. I've got her name. What's her name? My name? Oh, hold on. I did that one. Deeks. And I had like, well. So it's not serious. Yeah, it's not serious. Yeah, it's not serious. an interest you have, something like that. Get involved. Alright, um, what's your championship game? Uh, Jackie, you can go. He's back. Bethany. B-E-T-H-A-N-Y. B-E-T-H-N? B-E-T-H-A-N-Y. Like this. Okay, I got it. What causes you to attend? You I do. Let me go. And you have a bachelor degree? Bachelor's in uh, math. My favorite college memory was. Uh, I said bachelor's degree. <laughs> you a liar. Okay, so what's three minus one? Okay, and my favorite college memory was like uh, she went to a championship game for freshman year. So then 3 minus 1 is 2 plus 2 squared. Where it is. So it's another one. And I'm going to do it. Getting 
What did you say? Okay, because on this part of the graph, which way is it going? So when I follow my graph here, it's going up. And when I follow my graph here, it's going up. So it's always going uphill. It's never going downhill. So if it's going uphill here, and then uphill on this part as well, then it's uphill the whole time. So it's never going downhill. This one, it, how does it start off? Is that uphill or downhill? Downhill. And what about here? Oh, this part is downhill. downhill. So these two chunks would be your decreasing, mm -hmm. and then this chunk and this chunk would be your increasing. Mm -hmm. So for that one, you would do from, let me get off the board here. You would say it is increasing. Come here and use your paper. So you would say it's increasing from here to here. So negative one to one union. And then where is that one? From three till infinity. That would be increasing. Then for decreasing, where is it going downhill? From here to here. So negative infinity till negative one. Because I keep going up. On that side, it's coming down forever. And then on that chunk, it's between one to three. Now, these aren't exactly one, but we kind of just rounded to the nearest whole number. So we didn't have to put like point A or like 2.8. We just put 3. Number 10? Yeah. Um, did you do the graph of it yet for number 10? Yeah, no, I erased it because it's wrong. Okay, so let's fix that. Was this part right at least? Um, let's see. Okay, so you're very close on this. Remember that this number here, well, I'll just redo it with okay. you so you can see it. So this number here, this is the y value. Mm -hmm. This number is the x value. So instead of 5, oh. 0, it should be 0, 5. And then my x here is what? zero so it should be zero two oh. that's your first problem is your points are backwards so I go to zero two will this one be open or closed um closed okay so zero two closed and then I look at the shape it's an x squared so it has to be one of these two oh. then it's negative so it has to be down what does the plus two do to the graph um go uh huh. So I start here at up two. That's where I'm already yeah. starting, and my graph goes like this. But I only want it on that side. Now for the other chunk of Wait, the graph, why is it the left side, because it's less than zero. So it's kind of like it's oh. pointing that way. Okay. So you're drawing it that way. Okay. Okay. Then for this one, I go to zero five. It's going to be open. So zero five is here. And then this is, if it's a regular x, it's an mx plus b. Mm -hmm. Two-thirds is my slope. So I'm going to start here. Up two, one, two, three. Up two, one, two, three. And then there will be your line. Oh. Okay. Okay. 